Today I'm going to be demonstrating how I share dependencies across an HTTP request. Here I have set up a basic Hello World application. Um, as you can see here, I'm, I have a logger middleware where I'm just creating this child logger and I'm attaching it to the request object. So I'm just saying request.logger equals child logger and then I'm able to access this logger uh, within any any uh, HTTP context. So I just access it through request.logger. Anywhere I have access to this request, I also have access to the logger. And what that's giving me is a special, um, a special metadata logger that always includes the path and the query. So this helps me in debugging my application. Let me go ahead and just start my application and I'm going to access my user route. As my user ID one returns my object, I can go back in here and I can see uh, that it's requesting user one, and that is from this log here within my user route. It's requesting user one, and I'm saying uh, this is one, but it's also automatically attaching the metadata. What I want to be able to do is inside of other functions, let's say um, this mock database function, I have a get user. Uh, that takes an input. You can see here I just have regular console logs um, because this get user doesn't have access to the request object. Now one of the things that I can do of course is I can just add the request object as an argument. Uh, the problem with that is um, it can end up being a little bit messy adding this. Um, if I have many functions that are called all throughout the application uh, many nested functions, maybe get users three or four functions deep, I would have to pass that request object deep down through all of those functions. And that's just going to make the code base a lot, uh, a lot uglier and, and just more difficult to deal with. So this, um, this package here, express HTTP context, aims to solve that. What that's going to do is that's going to create a single context for the request that comes in so that I can share that dependency. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to npm install this. I'm going to go back to the page and the how to use this section is actually very simple. You can see it's creating an express application. Uh, it's firing up the app and what it's doing is it's just calling app.use and passing it in the HTTP context.middleware. So I'm going to go ahead and do that same exact thing. I'm going to copy these lines and create a new middleware. So I'm going to call this middleware context. Um, I like to create a new page uh, or a new file for all of my middlewares and all my controllers. It kind of helps me just keep things a little bit separated. And then my app, my application itself, the index.js, ends up becoming a lot smaller and just much more easy, much more easily manageable. Now, how I do that here is what I'm going to do is. Uh, I'm going to create a router instead of an app, and that's just off of express.router. And then instead of calling app.use, I just call router.use. And now I can export if I do module module.exports router. So now I'm just exporting the router. Um, another thing that I, I'm going to do that's uh, specific to specific to this. Um, this uh, middleware loader that I'm using is I have to set the order and that's just the priority in which these in which these routes are loaded so what I want to happen or what I need to have happen is I need the context to be loaded first so you can see my uh, my middleware is loaded with a priority of 100 I'm just gonna change this to, to be a little bit lower um, so that I can ensure that my context is gonna load first so now that I have this, uh, this loaded first in my Express application, what I can do is copy this and go into my logger. I'm going to add the context in here. And what I want to do is I want to add this child logger into the context. So where, where I'm creating this, um, so I'm creating this child logger on line 10. And what I want to do is I just want to add that into the into the context itself, I can do that just by calling the set command and giving it a name. Uh, in this instance, I'm just going to call it logger, and then I'm just going to pass in the child logger. So now, any place that has access to the HTTP context, 
um, it's going to be able to access my the child logger through the logger property. So what I should be able to do is inside the DB, um, just as long as this is called somewhere uh, within an HTTP context, which all of this code is going to be called from within an HTTP context, uh, even if this is multiple levels down, um, even if it's asynchronous, if it's after a fetch and a set timeout or whatever, it'll still have access to the HTTP context. So here I can access that context by just saying logger and instead of calling set, I'm just going to call get. And I'm just going to use the same name we used before, uh, logger. So now that I have that, um, I can pull out these basic uh, console logs and I'm just going to replace it with logger log. So now if I run this again, and I hit refresh, I should see something different here. So I no longer have that basic console log that was logging out uh, user one loaded. Um, it's actually logging through my logger and I can tell that because I have the metadata attached that is attached from within the logger middleware and that's the, the path and the query. So now I can see um, when, this, when this user was loaded, what page actually requested it as well as the arguments for that page. So this is going to help me debug a lot faster. So I can see if I were to um, pass in some junk, let's say I just hit uh, a user request. Um, I can see in here that it says could not find user undefined and that is this exact message here and this is coming in uh, from the user uh, with the with nothing in the query string so that tells me that in here I probably should be doing some sort of uh, some sort of validation not passing this in raw but making sure that uh, the ID itself is actually valid so now that I have um, access to this context I can pass something like this logger in and it can make my debugging life just a whole lot easier. So just to review, all I had to do here was add the context middleware, call router.use before any other routes. Then where I create the object itself, all I have to do is call HTTP context.set. Anywhere I want to get that, I again call HTTP context.get. Um, and now I can pass anything around um, any dependencies that will be specific to that exact HTTP context. This uh, express HTTP context package actually solves a fairly complicated problem in a, in a really simple and elegant way. Um, you can see all you have to do is call one getter and one setter. So this is one package that I definitely love to add to my express projects. So if you found this useful, definitely please share it with your coworkers or friends. I'm a small channel just getting started out and I appreciate every little share or like I can get. Um, anyway, thanks for watching until the end. Bye.